In the Nakano city of Tokyo, Japan, there is a very unique shop called Mushisha. In other words, insect shop in Japanese. As you can infer from the shop name, what they are selling is insects. In Japan, we have a culture of beetle petting, especially among children. This masculine and shining body of beetles are the dream of children. And I also used to pet and breed 100 step beetles when I was a junior high school student. But not only children, but also many office workers also enjoy petting beetles. They cannot forget the dream of beetles which they used to have when they were children. And they start petting beetles again when they grew up and get some time and money to do that. So on the weekends, when children don't have schools, this mushisha is filled with children and their parents. And on weekdays, there are many office workers who are visiting this place. So now let me introduce some of the cool beetles they have. Please bear with me for the very bad Latin pronunciation. This is mandibularis stag beetle. Mandibularis means big mandible, and it is actually the world's largest folk horn stag beetle. This one is from Sumatra Island, Indonesia. This is giraffe stag beetle. This is the world's largest sole tooth stag beetle with long and sharp jaws. This is from Sumatra Island, Indonesia too. And mandibularis stag beetle and this giraffe stag beetle are ones of the largest stag beetles in the world. Hexatherius peri, the fighting giant stag beetle, is a species of large stag beetle. The reddish front wing is a very characteristic of this beetle. This rainbow stag beetle is characterized with this beautiful greenish rainbow color. But there are also some color variations and this one is more purplish colored. Homodorus meli is famous for its orangish color. While most other species I introduced here are from Asia, this is originally from Africa, Cameroon. Prosopocoilus savage is also from Africa and it has this reddish color too. I am now wondering how the coloration is related to the distribution of the beetles. Nigidius lewisi is, as you can see, very small. It is as small as 50 mm and it is impossible to differentiate males and females with naked eye. They spend their whole life in rooted wood. Dorcas hope binodulosus is the beetle which I used to have. They are giant and masculine and my favorite. Torinohina flame is a beetle of the family Scarabidae. This is characterized by a wide variety of colors and the most popular color in Japan is this blue one, which is so beautiful. It was my first time to see this beetle, but now I really want to get one. Dynastis Granti lives in the desert area of Arizona, US. According to the owner of Mushisha, if you go there, you can actually see so many of these beetles flying and crashing the car and everything. Caucasus beetle is characterized by these three long horns and is one of the Asia's largest beetles. Since they have very strong combative spirits, along with Hercules beetle, it is said to be the strongest beetles in the world. The Satanas beetle is originally from Bolivia and living in the very high altitude regions. Since they used to be rarely seen and not that much was known about them, they were extremely rare in the beetle market but not anymore now. The Hercules beetle is the longest extant species of beetle in the world and it is also one of the largest flying insects in the world. It is known for its tremendous strength and it is named after Hercules, a hero of classical mythology who is famed for his great strength. Now I introduced 16 different beetles, but they have many more than that in the shop and in each species they have males and females with different colors and sizes which is very impressive. Not only beetles, but also they have this weird insect called Sea Ferox, also known as Briok. This is a very huge orthopteran, and if you look closer at its face, it is very scary. Besides insects, they also have so much equipment to pet the insects. Everything in this shelf is different kinds of jelly to feed the insects. Depending on the species and depending on the individual, they have different tastes of food, so we feed them different jelly. 
Also, during the breeding season, in order to give much energy to the females, we usually feed them with protein-boosted jelly. So with those various needs of jelly, they offer this many different jellies. They also have jelly stands, various cages, breeding goods and soil. As you can see, they have so many of those equipment because different insect needs different things. Since people who come to Mushisha are very huge beetle lovers, all of them are trying hard to make the insect house as comfortable as possible to live, grow and breed. Even from this diverse products of insect equipment at Mushisha, you can see how deep our insect petting culture is. They also have insect collections. All the shelves here are actually insect collections. They buy those collections from collectors or they also catch and pin those insects by themselves. So if you are in trouble with making insect collection for your final project of this course, you might want to visit Mushisha and buy some collections. But I don't recommend you doing that because their collections are so beautiful that they are actually very expensive. I would rather spend days in the forest to get them by myself. The living insects at Mushisha are coming from beetle breeders in Japan or they are importing those beetles from foreign countries with permission. In countries where beetle market is very big, such as Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Peru and Ecuador, local people living in the forest collect beetles and make a living by selling those beetles to beetle collectors or people like Mushisha. Sometimes, this beetle hunting is criticized because those critics are afraid of insects going extinct due to hunting. However, the owner of Mushisha gave me an interesting point here. He says that since those local people can make money in the forest by hunting beetles, they try to protect the forest. So if you ban the beetle hunting, those locals would start cutting down the trees and make a plantation to make their living. And actually, whenever he visits those countries to collect beetles, he always gets surprised to see so many places that used to be the forest of the beetles are now turning into plantation land. As long as they are natural habitats, beetles can recover their population. However, if they lose their habitats, there is no way that they can come back. Therefore, beetle hunting is actually a good motivation for the locals to protect their forests and we should not ban their hunting. I understand that there are many different opinions around this issue, but since what he said was directly coming from his own experiences of visiting those countries and seeing locals making their lives by hunting beetles, his idea was very interesting to me. Since the owner himself is a beetle lover and a very passionate insect collector, if you visit Mushisha, not only you can see very cool beetles, but also you can have very interesting insect conversation with the owner and the other staff members. If you ever have a chance to visit Tokyo, Japan, I highly recommend to visit Mushisha.